the Joe Rogan experience. Yep, so... But that's the problem with forbidding stuff. Yeah. It's, it never works. Well, it's also uh, Italian food and wine seem to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's, I think, I mean, the, they used to be what they drank because they were concerned with getting sick, right? And one of the best ways to not get sick was to drink wine. The alcohol because, content. Well, yeah, the alcohol content would keep the water from, I mean, like if you just drink water all the time, especially if it's sitting still, mm -hmm. you could get some bad fucking water, right? You can get bad water from a lake. I mean, how many, they didn't know jack shit about parasites oh. back then. How many people got some terrible diseases from drinking puddle water and shit, you know? I'm sure a lot. Oh, yeah, you just find some water, like, oh, we're thirsty, time to drink. Yeah. And, or even a creek. You drink in a creek and you think like, oh, this is a beautiful stream. This is uh, clear water. Yeah, but a beaver took a shit just a <laughs> hundred yards ahead. Exactly. And you, you don't know about it. You, you get what's called beaver fever. Yeah. That's what for real. That's what they call jardia. <laughs> they call it beaver fever. Yeah, that can be good. No, it's terrible. So they used to drink wine to prevent what they would call traveler's disease, mm -hmm. because people would take these those. What are those things called? The, the leather things that they would carry wine in. I want to say flask, but it's not a flask. What are those those leather satchels? Yeah, that yeah they I know what you're talking about. Wine I thought they, in. I thought they use flask for that, but I'm not sure. Might be. There's a, a term. It's like a leather bag, and it had like a on the end like a cork, and mm -hmm. they just drink from that, and that's how they would hydrate. Yep. People must have been just hammered all day. Yeah. When you read the statistics of how much people used to drink, it's amazing that anything ever got done because it's just people were drinking morning through night. And her, they must have been horrific to each other. Yeah. Then just just uh, imagine like a whole civilization that is a drunken bar at 1 a.m. Angry drunk. You know, yeah. it's funny because I never, und I mean, I've seen it enough that I get it. People get edgy and weird where... Uh, when they drink too much, but I never got it because to me it's like if I'm drunk, it's like that's when I'm happy. I want right. to hug people. Fuck, yeah. why would I want to be in a bad mood? This is awesome. This well, you're a nice guy. That's you, what when, it is that comes yeah. out the yeah. If you're a fucking asshole, and it you shows get drunk. up. <laughs> I see. You're especially if you're just barely keeping that asshole under the surface. You just barely just want right. to fucking stab everybody and club them and steal their women, <clears throat> and then you get a couple of drinks in you. And uh, this, this it, alcohol, alcohol is a great social lubricant, mm -hmm. right? It's great for releasing inhibitions and letting people communicate with each other more freely and mm -hmm. have fun. But this, it's also it removes doubt, mm -hmm. and that's not good. Right? I think doubt is critical. Yeah. Like doubt is one of the pieces of the great puzzle, mm -hmm. right? The the great puzzle has many ingredients, and one of those ingredients is doubt. And doubt is important. You should look at anything you're about to contemplate and go, hmm, let yep. me think about this. Let me think what could go wrong. When you get a couple of drinks, fuck it, let's do it. Let's go. Woo! And then next thing you know, you know, you're on an internet meme. Hold my beer. Yeah, right. exactly. We talked about that yesterday, like some of the most more ridiculous ones. But there's so many of those out there, and almost all of them have to do with alcohol. Yeah. No, you're totally right. And I think what you're saying about that, there's a great... Uh, Alan Watts, the guy who popularizes Zen and Taoism and all of that stuff, he had this great line. He called it the wisdom of insecurity. Mm. You know, this idea of tread real careful. There's yeah. a wisdom there in not being overly sure. dogmatic. and Which doesn't mean... The problem is then people take that concept too far and that turn it into having no balls and not being able right. to take a stand. That's not the solution either. That's the other side of the problem. But there's a sweet spot in between where you can take stances, but they are careful stances. They are stances that are very willing to be changed at the drop of a dime if you show the good evidence to, to change them, you know? Yeah. Is, that, to me, is what intellectual honesty looks like, you know? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's good to be aware of all the possibilities. I used to tell people that when I was uh, teaching Taekwondo, like people that mm -hmm. would compete, if they were really, really nervous, I'd be like, the really smart people are really nervous because you're aware of all the possibilities of everything that can go wrong. The people that aren't worried about it at all, they're usually dumb. There's that, but also to me, there are some people, like I look at some of the people who are able to keep it together in this, like kind of like Chuck Liddell, right? Mm -hmm. Take a nap right before a fight kind of right. thing. I can tell by look at those guys and just be like, 
you know something I don't know. You know, there's <laughs> something there that you're doing. Confidence, uh, for sure. I mean, Chuck had been knocking people unconscious yeah. for many, many years, and he knew exactly what to do. And I and think he knew he was good at it. There's that, for yeah. sure. And I think there's the other side is knowing that, okay, if I have decided to do it, fear is not going to help me now. You know, right. it helped me to make decisions earlier, but right now it's not going to help me, so let's figure out. Man, it was hilarious. There's... Um, my girlfriend fights MMA professionally. And yeah, I've noticed uh, that. Yeah, she's wild, man. I've been paying attention she's... to uh, your escapades online. <laughs> yeah, it, she's, <laughs> she's crazy, She's huh? crazy. She's, uh, <laughs> she literally had that Chuck Liddell mode where she, she took a nap right before a fight. And, you know, like 45 minutes before you have to wake her up going like, right. hey, ready? And she's all like, okay, ready to roll. And I'm like, I, I would not sleep for a week prior. How do you manage to keep it together it's like this? It's good to do. You know? I used to do that. I used to sleep before fights. It's good. That's awesome. Yeah, but it, it, you, you just can get yourself into a more calm yeah. state. It's, it's so much better than um, frantically running around and freaking out and fretting. Plus, it's a, it's a, it freaks out your opponents. I would sleep like right on the bleachers. Mm -hmm. I'd just go to sleep right there. And everybody else would be nervous and shit, and you're sleeping. Exactly. You, know? you look Wait at that. Minute. I, I'm supposed to fight that guy? The yeah. guy was sleeping right before the fight? Hell no. Like, the first match he did man, was nuts because, you know, you're in the locker room and there's the guy sitting next to you. Goes out for his match, come right back, he said he split blood, open, covered yeah. in blood, and they're telling you, okay, you get ready, you're going next. <laughs> and I'm dying, right? I'm right. just thinking, how the hell? And she's all like, la, la, la. <laughs>